This question is quite different and we're going to do it in three parts because as you can see over here you've been given two different views. This is actually the front view of the question and that is the top view okay, which has been drawn out here. That's the front view in first angle orthographic projection and that is the top view which is quite a different setup for these types of questions and we're going to complete the interpenetration curve and we're also going to go in the second and third parts and we're going to develop our main pipe and we're also going to develop the secondary pipe. Okay, so in this question we have a prism, a square based prism, which has got a cylinder which is hitting into the side of it. We're going to have a look at how to go and find the interpenetration curve which is going to be in the top view, as I say, which is strange for these kinds of questions. Let's have a look at how that's going to work. First of all, we're going to number, as always. So we're going to start by going and numbering our main pipe, okay, which is seen here in our front view. And I'm just going to use letters for it, for each of the corners. Label them as A, B, C and D. And then I'm going to transfer that into my top view. Now be careful here, you'll see that this line is indicated as hidden detail, that's point C over there, which normally, if this was a front view, that would be a dark line, but since it's a top view, and you're looking from that direction, it's a hidden detail line. Okay, so we're just going to transfer these. Point A over here I've left as, um, as a light line for now, just in case something of our pipe hits into it, and we can label that is being AA and then this is being CC and this of course is BB and then this one is DD and now with the circle once that labeling is done we have to label the circle as well but of course when it comes to these kinds of questions our circle has to be broken up and we usually use 12 parts and to do that we use a 30 60 degree set square which I'm using at the moment and I'm going to do 30 degree lines across the center of my circle and I'm then going to do 60 degree lines across the center of my circle which of course then breaks it up into 12 equal parts and you'll see that I'm not doing it very neatly because of course well, not neatly, as I said, it is accurate, but I don't have to worry about going over the edge of my circle because this is an auxiliary view. And I've just got to draw my center lines. Okay, so now that breaks up my circle into 12 equal parts, and I have to number that as well. It's going to, the numbering for our circle is going to be very important for this question. And I am going to use the numbers 1 to 12. Okay, so going all the way around clockwise I'm going to label each of those points using the numbers 1 to 12 okay great now we're going to do the same thing of course in this auxiliary view here in our front view and we're also going to do the division using our 30 60 degree set square first our 30 degree lines and then our 60 degree lines and then once we've done this we of course now need to get our numbering into this view as well and the numbering between our auxiliary view here and there of course has got to match but when you transfer numbering from an auxiliary view here in your top view to your front view, of course it's not going to be the same. You're not going to have one at the top over there again. It's going to, that one is going to change positions. Now we know that in a top view, when you take an auxiliary view and you flip it up like this, that your point 4 over there would come to the front and then point 10 would be behind it. So I'm just going to label as if there was a corner there. I'm going to label it. Okay, that would be 4 comma 10. You'd see point 4 first, then point 10, which then tells us that point 4 is the highest point in this view and point 10 is below it. So as you flip this through to a front view, okay, you flip that now from here to a front view, point 4 is therefore going to be at the top there and point 10 at the bottom. There would be point 4 and there would be point 10 and that's because we saw point 4 in our top view first and 10 below it so 4's got to be at the top in our front view 
and 10 below it, which then transfers, of course, onto our circle. That would be 0.4, and this would be 0.10. Now, because we've been labeling clockwise, this will stay clockwise, so we can now complete this labeling as well, because we have the 4 and the 10 there. That would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that would be 10, 11, and 12. And then, of course, we'd start with 1 there, 2, and 3 to complete the labeling. Okay. So, now we've got that done. We can also clearly hear there's 0 0.7, there's 0 0.1. 0 0.7 over here, if this gets flipped up, 0 0.7 would be in the front here and 0 0.1 behind it, which we can clearly see has worked out here. There's 0 0.7 in front and there's 0 0.1 behind it. So, we can clearly see that our our labeling for these two circles matches up nicely and this is a very very important step if you don't get this labeling right here right at the beginning the whole question goes okay now to go and find our interpenetration curve here in our top view we of course are going to take each of the points that we've now put into our auxiliary view here and we're going to project them across we're also, of course, going to use the points here from our top view. But to start with, as always, we are going to project down and find our termination points, which, of course, is going to our main termination points, which will be for point 10 over there. Okay, so we can take that point 10 across here, mark it there, and we can clearly see that that over there is where point 10 would terminate. I'm going to mark it quite clearly and label it. And then the same thing for point 4. There's point 4 where it hits into our main pipe. If I project that down and then go and match it up with point 4 here. That over there is where point 4 would be. Now, just take note, because this is a top view, the curve on point 4 side is actually going to be dark. And the one joining up to point 10 will be hidden detail. Because you're looking from the top, you're looking top down like that. You're going to see the whole curve on this side of the shape, and as soon as it passes point B over there, this is going to be hidden detail. So let's see how that's going to work out. Okay, so now we've done our termination points there, now we have to go to our next set. And to do that, we're going to project point 3 and point 5 across in our top view, and sorry, in our front view. It gets confusing. And then project it down into our top view, and then match it up with point three and point five over here and we're going to mark each of those that would be point three and then this would be point five okay so we've done four we've done three and five and we're going to move down we're going to go to two and six okay there's two and six and we're going to project that across and you can see that's still hitting line AB over there, which is quite important because we know that we can see it in the top view. So we're going to project that down. And then we're going to take, that was 0 0.2 and 0 0.6. We're going to take 0 0.2 across. And we're going to take 0 0.6 across. And where those meet up, we'll then mark those. That, of course, will then be 2. And this one will be 6. Okay, now, once we get to that point 2 and point 6, we're now going to go past corner B there. As soon as we go past corner B, the, this cylinder, when it hits into corner B, creates a turning point. Okay, now, that turning point over there, where it hits into B, of course, is going to be on B's line over here. But we need to find out where that's going to be on this line, in terms of height. And to be able to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take point B over here across into our auxiliary view. And then we're going to measure from the center point over here up in the, on this line 10-4. Okay, we're going to measure that distance. We're going to see how far that is on that line 10-4. Okay, and that's 13 millimeters. And now we're going to go down into this view and we're going to plot that on that same line 10-4 there's our 13 millimeters over there okay and then we're going to draw a line so that it touches the edge of our circle 
Okay, and we've done that now because what we've done is we've now taken that point and we've transferred it across. Okay, we've transferred it according to height over here and then brought it down over here onto this auxiliary view. Now where that line hits into the edge of that circle, once over there and once over here, those are our two turning points. And we can now mark them as they hit into line B. One over there and one there. There's line B. As it hits into line B, we can now mark those two turning points. That's the point where this curve is now going to go behind our main pipe. So all of this curve over here up until now is going to be dark. You'll be able to see it. You'd use a French curve to do this, of course. I'm going to draw it in for you so long so that you can see it. Okay, it would normally be done with a French curve, which would come out a lot neater than what I'm going to sketch it now. But just so that you've got an idea, okay, that will be the curve that you can see in the, fr in the front or on the top of that shape. Now, as we turn those two points, we go to our two turning points there. We now are going, of course, going to go into our hidden detail. So the next two points, of course, is going to be 1 and 7, okay, which is already across there with that center line. We'll take point 1 and point 7 down. Okay, there's point 1 and point 7. And we're going to take that across, go and find, there's 1 over there. So, I'm going to take point 1 across now. And let it meet up with where I projected point 1 and point 7. Okay, so that over there is going to be point 1. And the one across here from point 7, I just have to extend a little bit further. And this, of course, then will be point 7. Okay. Now, those two points on the end there, of course, are the two edges of our cylinder here. So, as soon as we hit those, we're now going to, we're going to go out like that. Now, we're going to go slightly bit more in. You'll see that as the points come across. So, we're going to go to point 12 and 8. Project that across. Where that hits our main pipe, we're going to bring that down and then mark off. There's point 12 over there, which is already projected across. So that would be 12, and then point 8, which is also already projected across. And that over there would be point 8, and then we do the same thing again with 9 and 11. 9, 11 across, and then down, and then there's point 9, if we bring that across there, that to the there will be 9, and then of course 11 over there. Okay, now the last point there of course would be 10, which we've already done, so now this little piece here is now of course hidden detail, so it's a joining line up to that turning point which is over there and over there again you'd normally do this with a french curve and then our curve going around like this okay that will go just ignore that piece over there but that will go from seven to eight and then from eight to nine over there and from nine to ten if I can get that clear for you, and then from 10 through to 11, and from 11 to 12, and then of course from 12 back to 1 again. Okay, so there's our, our interpenetration curve over there that runs around, and that of course is all in hidden detail. Now, of course the last part we have to do is go and draw in everything that we would still see as dark lines in this front view. Of course, that iron AA I can go and draw in because nothing has hit into that at all. So I'm going to draw that in. And then our line over here, our line 1, is going to go in until it hits our line B. Because line 1 over there is going to be hidden detail as soon as it goes past B. Because remember, we're looking from the top for this view. So this little piece over here to where it goes to point 1 is going to be hidden detail and then of course the same thing will happen down the bottom here for point seven there'll be a little piece of it which is going to be hidden detail 
And then the other part, of course, here that we have to draw in dark is going to be line B. Which will be dark up until that point there. Okay, so that now completes our front view. Sorry, our front view. Our top view. Okay, with our interpenetration curve. And then in the next video, we're going to have a look at doing the development of the main pipe.